hey guys so in this video i'm going to go through the basics of view as soon as possible so let's begin first of all let's actually go ahead and create a div this div will be what will contain our entire application so in order to create our application first of all i just want to mention that i have selected view and view 2.1 uh, over here uh, i'm using js fiddle so if you just want to get started without actually having to set up the entire environment then you can use this if you want to set up the environment then you can go ahead and install node.js and then from there you can do npm install view and you can go ahead and set it up but i'm just going to use this for now so to create a new view application we need to create an instance of view and in this instance uh, we're going to pass a number of things but first of all let's just pass something called el el is or stands for element which is going to be this element now this uh, input will basically take uh, sort of a css selector so you can say hash my app and if you're saying hash my app that basically means your app has the id of equal to my app and this basically is saying that okay my, uh, grab the element that has the id of my app and that is this div that is going to be our entire application now obviously that wouldn't actually do much when we run the application we wouldn't really know what's happening so in order to add some data and see if it actually works what we can do is we can say data and we can pass in an object and over here i can just say test data that is going to be welcome to view and i just want to use interpolation here which is double braces using double braces you can pass in expressions and a variable can also be used as an expression so you can just pass in this variable name over here and you can run and it says welcome to view so basically what we've done is we've created a model that is test data and we have displayed it over here what if you want to make changes to the model for this we can use an input field which you would have expected but this input field will basically contain an, uh, a directive what is called a directive in view and this is going to be the model directive so what the model directive does is it basically uh, binds itself to this particular uh, variable whatever variable we pass here and whenever we make changes to the input field it uh, automatically updates the variable so let's run it once and you can see that as of now since uh, the model is bound to this variable it automatically displays welcome to view in the input field as soon as i remove this uh, the data is also removed now i can make changes here and i can say whatever i want and as you can see everything is reflected right here so at this point what we've done is basically we've thrown out some data onto the screen and we've also taken some input from the user now let's say we had an array and uh, this would be welcome comma to comma view what we can do now is we can have a span and uh, in this span we can say v4 so v4 is another directive that basically takes an array and it converts it into multiple uh, elements so in this case this span is going to be multiplied into three because there are three elements here so what, are, what we're going to pass in here is we're going to give it a variable name so let's say uh, text in test data and uh, since text is just going to be a simple string i can just add the interpolation and i can say text just going to get rid of this run the app and as you can see it's displayed as you would expect right here so let's say there are certain things that we want to filter out now the direct way of doing this as of now there are there is a better method of doing this but for now we can uh, just for example sake i'm going to go ahead and do this and uh, let's just make this a small w so in this case let's say i want to filter out not in view you have something called ng uh, or sorry uh, vf uh, which basically is conditional and you can add some statement that resolves to a boolean value but view doesn't recommend you having vf and v4 in the same element so instead i'm just going to add another span here and in this i'm going to say vf is equal to so what do we want to do if the text is equal to or rather not equal to not then we want to display the text so i'm just going to grab this and paste it here 
and let's run this code and you can say see that instead of saying you are not welcome to view it says you are welcome to view and that is because of the vf condition so let's say in instead of having something so random uh, we had a list of products so let's say this is going to be a watch then we are going to have a mobile phone and let's say we are going to have a laptop all right so at this point this code will just display all of these elements which is kind of expected what we can do is if it's a watch we want to display the price of let's say 15 all right and text is going to be watch uh, let's just add the text over here and run it and keep it equal to in this case as soon as it sees watch it just adds uh, appends dollar 15 to it and uh, i'm also gonna go ahead and add a break tag here so it's much better to read much easier to read all right so now what we can do is for each of these products we can actually add a separate uh, separate value so here what i can do is instead of saying v if i can say v else if this is going to be the mobile phone mobile phone all right let's add the hyphen and there we go so v else if text equals mobile phone so if the text is watch uh, then we want to display dollar 15 else if the text is mobile phone then we want to display dollar let's say uh, it's gonna be at least 80 dollars all right and finally you would also have v else in this case obviously you won't be having any sort of condition here because this is an else condition in that case we are going to display 1400 dollars that's a expensive laptop but yeah that works so as you can see uh, you have loops and you have conditional statements in view as well so till now what we've done is we've basically used interpolation we've understood what interpolation does now just to be clear uh, it's not just variables that you can put in interpolation you can add expressions if you want uh, so for example if you wanted to say this is a watch then in that case I want to maybe add a hyphen this is just random but for example sake let's do it so I'm just gonna say text equal to equal to equal to watch then in that case I want to display text plus otherwise I want to display the text so basically if the text is watch then I want to display a text with hyphen otherwise I, I just want to display the text so here you can see watch hyphen dollar 15 so you can add expressions in this uh, you can't add things like if condition else and all of that because that is that is not an expression that is a statement you can add any sort of expression you want over here so the next thing we want to do is we want to add a button that basically displays your uh, total value so the total value for watch plus mobile phone plus laptop and uh, so let's add an input or, or let's add a button at the red click so if you click then um, I want to set a total value so let me just create a total and that is going to be zero for now and okay calculate total and here I'm just gonna say total equals 15 plus 80 plus 1400 so when you click on this you just want to set total to 15 plus 80 plus 1400 which is the total of all of the products and here I'm just gonna say display dollar total let's go ahead and run it as of now it says dollar zero because we haven't calculated the total when you click and calculate total it says the total is dollar one four nine five so we're just going to convert these into objects so the name of this product is going to be watch and the value or the price let's say is going to be 15 dollars all right so now instead of just printing it like this first off since we have uh, changed this into an object from a text uh, from a string uh, this text is actually going to contain the entire object so i'm just going to rename this to product 
product and here I'm just gonna say product and uh, this is gonna be product dot name and these are also going to be product dot name now here again we're gonna say product dot name equals watch and in these places one two and three we want to replace this with product dot price so this is going to be product dot name and we run it and uh, you can see this is displayed again but we haven't added the dollar which is why we don't see the dollar sign similarly this is static right now so now as of now we're not actually iterating over the entire element what we can do is we can use computed properties computed properties are basically a way of view to give you uh, calculated values so in this case if we say total instead of saying total over here uh, or let's say calculate total and this is going to be a function this function is going to return we can say test data dot map and for each product we just want to get product dot price and uh, dot dot uh, what is that reduce and in reduce we are going to get the element and we are going to get the accumulator so a plus E. This is just going to add up uh, each element and put it in the accumulator. So accumulator plus E is going to be returned and then finally it returns the total value. So instead of uh, saying total, I can say calculate total. Calculate total. Uh, when I'm trying to access something from the uh, JavaScript code, this is going to be inside the this of, uh, of view. So I can just say this dot test data so interestingly enough you don't have to actually pass it like this I just want to run it and it automatically calculates the total and shows it to you now if I make any changes to this uh, price so we had an input field somewhere yeah it's right here right uh, so instead of uh, binding it to test data let's bind it to let's say test data zero dot price and run it so now it's 15 let's say we make it 1500 which is interesting so I guess this is taking it as text which is the problem over here uh, I'm just gonna make it number and run this so if we make it 1500 it becomes 2980 which is 1500 plus 80 plus 1400 so that is basically the computed values. Let's say I want to add a class equals active. Okay. And for class active or dot active, I'm just going to say, I should probably make it a smaller a. So class active. And I just want to say that the color is going to be red and just run it. And you can see that since the class is active, the color is red. Let's say I wanted to make this class name dynamic. So when, for example, some event occurs or something changes in the data, I, I want to you know, actually reflect that in my UI. In order to do that, what I can do is I can use ng-bind director. We use colon to indicate that we have to bind something to this class. Now, when I run this, this is not actually going to be red. The reason for that is because it's expecting active to be uh, some sort of a variable. So instead what I can say is I can say active is going to be active and I can run this. And now it this doesn't have to be the same name. This could be something else like for example active class let's say 
and I could I would have to do the same over here active class and I can run it so what we've essentially done is we've passed in a variable in the bind class and whenever this variable changes so instead of active is if I just remove this I run it it will basically get rid of this CSS class let's say on click I want to add whatever is in here into this this class so I'm gonna give this a different variable so I'm just gonna say input and I'm gonna create an input field over here so always make sure that when you're declaring variables over here when you're using variables over here they're declared beforehand because if you uh, declare the variables after creating the view object then in that case those uh, those variables won't be tracked by view and input is just going to be empty before uh, in the start rather and what we're going to do is we are going to on click we are going to set the active class equal to input and initially active class is also empty change class run it and now if I say active and I click on change class you can see that the class is changed so you can also have I think it's methods uh, let's just add this code in this function so on click handler equals function this dot active class equals this dot input and here we're just gonna say on click handler and so basically what I did was I made a mistake syntactical mistake over here let's run it again and the uh, this thing starts working so on click handler all right so let's say active and it still works so basically on click of this button we're calling the click handler which is part of this method object um, and that way you can pass methods to view and you can say that I want to use this method over here and then you can actually use those methods as and when you want throughout your code so thank you for watching this video I hope this was helpful uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up if it was and subscribe for more videos I'll see you in the next one